If you're on JJK TikTok, which is extremely hard to avoid nowadays, then you've probably seen the three-way domain expansion meme. Honestly, the meme is used in a lot of different sections of the internet, so if you're watching this video, then you have definitely seen it. But let's think about it for a moment. There was Ryu Ishigori, who had the highest cursed energy output in all the Cullen games. Takako Uro, I'm not saying that right, but that's what I'm going to say for the rest of the video, who can manipulate space and the sky. And Yuta Akotsu, the prodigal Jujutsu High Sorcerer, second only to Gojo. And all three of them can use a domain expansion, the pinnacle of sorcery, and we never got to see what it was. And spoilers for the manga, so if you're not caught up or in anime only, I would click off now. But with Ishigori dead, Uro basically irrelevant, and Yuta seemingly finished with his task, it seems that we won't be seeing their domains anytime soon. But I think I know what they could have been. Let's get into it. Like I said before, domain expansions are the pinnacle of Jujutsu Kaisen's power system and take a lot of skill to wield properly, so many of the characters in the story outright can't use it, which makes it a bit harder to theorize on when looking at our three domains, but easier to explain because every time someone does use it, there's a lot of explanation to it and a lot of blah blah blah. So, a domain expansion uses cursed energy to construct a barrier of the user's innate domain, which is basically their heart in less of a literal sense and more like a spiritual or mental way, as the barrier itself is infused with the user's curse technique. Making a domain does buff the user's curse technique in general, and the techniques made inside are guaranteed to hit, not counting specific counters like simple domains and all of that. Domain expansions can be tweaked and changed in size, shape, and even the addition of binding vowels, but unless you're Gojo or Sukuna, Good luck with that part, it takes a lot of cursed energy, and more importantly, knowledge and finesse to accomplish that. Turning our focus to the three main characters of this video, knowing their cursed technique is half the battle, as we need to figure out what type of domain they have, lethal or non-lethal. Lethal domains are the most common, being the ones that have the sure hit effect I was talking about earlier. Yeah, just having that effect is what makes it lethal. So even Hikari's domain is part of this category, even though the guarantee hit is just putting information into the person's brain. Although non-lethal domains are more rare in the current setting of Jujutsu Kaisen, they were pretty common in the past eras, which might be useful information, taking into account that Ishigori and Uro are both reincarnated sorcerers. But these domains forgo their sure hit effect and only force the targets inside to follow the rules of the infused curse technique. Think of Higurama's deadly sentencing domain, as it forces all participants to follow a trial of sorts, being unable to use violence, and even the user himself can't ignore these rules. With all the important information out the way, let's start theorizing, starting with Ryu Ishigori, the literal tank out of these three. His curse technique is Curse Energy Discharge, which allows him to shoot concentrated blasts of cursed energy with his stylish hairdo. Does that make balding his weakness? Uh, kind of sad, but, but more importantly, these attacks are strong enough to destroy concrete, and when charged up with granite blasts, it can completely decimate buildings. So what kind of domain will best fit this destructive character and ability? Side note, while researching for the video, I learned there's like a small category, a subcategory, and domains. There's not like a real name for it, like lethal or non-lethal, so I'll just call them instant and non-instant. It, it makes sense. Basically, characters like Gojo, Maito, and Jogo, to some extent, don't get your hopes up Jogo fans, have instant domains as opening them up is a certain victory against most characters in the story. And it's not due to an onslaught of different attacks, but domain open, boom, you're done. I included Jogo because it's stated that normal sorcerers would burn up in his domain upon entering it, but he only used it against Gojo, so we can't really test that theory, like if Yuji would be fine. So he's an if. Non-instant domains open their barriers but rely more on additional attacks and the buff they get to win. Think of Dagon's Beach Domain, Hikari's Gambling Domain, and even Megami's Incomplete One that uses his Shikigami and Shadow Clones. So, it's easy to say that Ishigori's Domain can be instant, just creating a concentrated ball of cursed energy that expands outward and destroys everything, like an atomic bomb or hollow purple to keep it in the JJK family. And we already know that the Pompadour Sorcerer can withstand his own attacks, and seemingly attacks made by the user's own energy is less effective against them? So it's a plausible idea, but think of his personality. He was talking about feasting and desserts and got upset when Yuta was talking instead of fighting. So Ishigori wants a fight, not an instant victory. My idea for his domain is simple, but falls in line with his battle hungry character. So Ishigori says domain expansion, but cooler than that. 
and the barrier takes form, taking the appearance of a small cafe or bakery, something like that. He loves his sweets, he loves talking about that. The whole gimmick is that every part of the domain can fire off one of these cursed energy blasts. From the ground, to the ceiling, to the cake in the bakery window, anything and everything can be used as an attack. This allows Ishigori and his opponent, if they're skilled enough, to fight pretty normally, only adding the unexpected element of the beam attacks, giving the fight Ishigori always wanted. Maybe he can even add a binding valve that makes his attack stronger the more he gets injured, but I doubt it. Look, this idea is basic, I know, but so is the sorcerer. Ishigori is a very straightforward person that only wants to fight. There's no way he's going to complicate his domain, his technique, or even his strategy. He went face to face with Sukuna and got slashed once. Then he tried to blast the king of curses but then got packed up. So yeah, creative thinking is not his forte. Next is Takago Uro, who actually has a pretty interesting backstory, as she was an assassin in her previous life, but was backstabbed ha, by her fellow killers being used as a scapegoat for all their assassinations. At first, her curse technique, Sky Manipulation, doesn't sound like it's a good pair with her assassin background, but after looking into it, there's some great ways to use it. Sky Manipulation allows Uro to turn the sky into a tangible surface, something she can physically interact with and pull. She is distorting space itself, being able to levitate and fly, and although Sky Manipulation cannot be used directly on a person in a harmful manner, it can be used to alter space to avoid attacks and even deflect projectiles. Then Icebreaker is an application of Sky Manipulation, with Uro hitting the surface or the sky around a person, creating a powerful and focused shockwave. Now the domain for this character is a bit easier for me to think of, mostly because I'm copying Naya Zenin's homework. To give the Sparknotes version, Naya is a certified dick who kept evolving like a Pokemon, going from human, to the hungry hungry caterpillar, to this giant face, and finally whatever this thing is. In this state, Naya can use a domain expansion which allows his projection sorceries to affect people down to the cellular level, making it impossible for them to move without taking damage. My idea for Earl's domain will work in a similar way, as she, unlike Ishigori, isn't really about fighting fair, but instead goes for an opportunistic route, only attacking when her chances of winning are high, just like an assassin. So she says domain expansion, insert cool sound effects here, and I'm not really sure what the setting might be because we don't know much about her, maybe like a planetarium because of the space and sky theme. But in this domain, Earl has complete control of the sky, including the surface that is in, on, and around a person, which at first doesn't hurt them because it's not something that can be used offensively. However, if the opponent starts to move, they distort the new surface created and causes those focused shockwaves on themselves. Staying still is the best way to avoid getting hit by the shockwaves, but it makes you a sitting duck allowing Earl to attack you normally. Yuta noticed in their fight that sky manipulation bypasses the conventional defenses, so something like this is definitely possible when using a domain expansion. Okay, we have come to the most theorized and most intriguing person when it comes to domains, Yuta Okotsu. I've been avoiding other people's videos on this subject because I wanted to try something original and probably wrong, but is there really anything original anymore? Yuta's curse technique is copy or mimicry, whichever translation you favor, and it allows him to copy another sorcerer's innate technique and use them. He can copy multiple abilities and use them in rapid succession. It was stated by Kenjaku that Yuta can unconditionally copy abilities, but it was heavily implied that Yuta was only able to copy sky manipulation from Uro after Rika ate her arm. So the full details are not revealed, but the basis is that copy factor. There are some facts about Yuta that influence my thinking on his domain. 1. Rika is not a necessary part of the domain. During the three domain clash, it was specifically said that both Ishigoi and Uro were focused on keeping Rika out to keep Yuta from having an advantage, not to keep him from using his domain in general. The domain was still forming perfectly fine, and if Rika was an essential part to the domain, Gege would have stated that this event interfered with the formation because it was only the three separate domain rules clashing and the cockroach curse that messed everything up. So whatever his domain is, Rika is not needed. And two, Yuta is an anomaly in the Jujutsu world. In JJK Zero, it was revealed that Yuta is the descendant of, oh my god, I can't pronounce his name, Michizane Sugawara, one of the greatest sorcerers to ever live, which might explain how he was the one to keep Rika Orimoto's soul from moving on, instead of the normal deceased party cursing the living. Yuta's power seems to be so strong it can cause these strange events, which is what I want to focus on in his domain. 
So he says domain expansion, blah blah blah. I really don't know what it will look like though. I actually have no idea. Maybe a playground similar to the one he and Rika played on as kids where all this sorcery stuff actually started. I'm visualizing like a graveyard situation with Yuta as a necromancer basically. In this domain, all of his copied abilities are manifested as clones of the original user. So Yuta's cursed speech would appear as Inumaki, and sky manipulation takes form of Uro, and so on and so on. These clones have a level of autonomy and can act on their own, just like Rika, but the surehead effect of the domain is what tweaks their actions. Okay, yeah, I'm getting into like fan fiction territory here. I get it, it sounds a bit weird. It, it sounds a lot weird. But if a card's domain just inserts information into the opponent's head, and if Gojo and Sukuna can change the parameters of their domains, why can't Yuta just give information to these clones to go on the offensive or defensive when in his domain? I'm just saying, it's a pretty interesting idea, and if it doesn't happen, Wattpad is waiting for it. This gives Yuta a range in how he attacks his opponents, having multiple different abilities allows him to create multiple different strategies. If Yuta is able to copy Gojo's Limitless, can we see Gojo again? You gotta throw in some copium when you can, come on now. But those are my ideas. Look, I gave up trying to do those safe theories a long time ago. I'm getting weirder and weirder with each of my predictions. If you have any predictions of your own or you think mine are amazing or terrible, let me know in the comments down below. Also, sorry I haven't posted in a bit. Finals were crazy. Alright, peace.